Uh, I'll introduce our wonderful panel. This is the lovely Jackie Edwards, the BFI's Head of Young Audiences Content Fund. We've also got Paul Mortimer, Head of Digital Channels and Acquisitions ITV. We've got Sean Edwin Roberts, Content Commissioner at S4C. Oh, you've sat in the right order. That's very good. <laughs> um, I just realised you're all in the right order. Uh, Sarah Lazenby, Head of Features and Formats at Channel 4, and Bill McLeod, Commissioning Editor at BBC Alba. Welcome, everybody. Oh, yeah. Get rid of that now. OK, so Jackie, we'll start with you, of course. You are the woman in here that everybody wants to know. Um, what is the fund? What is the fund? The fund is brilliant news for the children's television industry, is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it is a fantastic opportunity for us to continue the brilliant heritage of children's programme making in the UK, carry on, expand it and grow it, and really create fantastic content, big, bold, new shows that really reflect the lives of British audiences. Um, the DCMS has given us funding for a three-year pilot, um, and it's going to support both development and production of public service broadcast content for under-18s. Um, so when I mean, say public service content, I mean things that encourage and stimulate an understanding of the world, encourage knowledge and learning, and ref really reflect British children's lives back to them and show the fantastically diverse nurture, nature of Britain. Um, the BFI, as Katie said, has given us up to 50 million, £57 million pounds to spend across the three years, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think we can undersell that point. It is really nice. So thanks, government. Thanks, DCMS. It's a brilliant thing. You've done a brilliant gift. You've given the children's uh, industry and also audiences in the UK. Um, you know, we're going to be, we've got a lot of priorities to try and achieve in the content that we're looking for, quality, innovation, things that represent the diverse nature of the country. Uh, we want to stimulate new voices to come through, sort of encourage new talent into the industry. Um, we want to um, get content growing in the nations and the regions. Um, and it is a big opportunity, as I say, to really continue the fantastic heritage of brilliant children's programme making in the UK. So it's a brilliant thing is what it is, Katie. It's great. I can't see any problems with it. It's, I just, can't. it's just fantastic. No. <laughs> it's a present for everybody, isn't it? Uh, when is it actually happening? Well, it's happening. It's happening now. The doors opened on the 1st of April and the pilot is a, a rolling scheme for three years. Um, the guidelines are published on the BFI website under the Young Audiences Content Fund. I encourage everybody to read and enjoy and assimilate. Um, the application forms are there and live, so you can start applying, as people have, and uh, we're getting lots of applications through, and we've had a huge amount of interest in the fund. So thank you for everybody that's inquired, and keep on going. Um, the way we're looking at this is a fantastic collaborative in, in, um, opportunity for the whole industry, for producers, for broadcasters, for regulators, to really do something important and special for children's audiences in the UK. So we want as many people to engage with the fund as possible possible don't be shy none of us bite much um, so please if you've got any questions because the only way we're going to work this make this work as brilliant as it can is if we all work together so we want feedback all the way through um, we've got a really rigorous evaluation process for the fund and so we'll be under constant review and reviewing ourselves but we want you to tell us as well can we make it better can we make it more fit for purpose can we actually achieve better results by modifying things it's a pilot we can be flexible we can change change things so please everybody engage and enjoy it because it is a fantastic opportunity we've got here amazing and why is it actually happening um, it's really to address the decline in public service content over the last 10 to 15 years through a series and series of unfortunate events restrictions around advertising tax break reduction in uh, advertising revenues and the rise and rise and rise of brand new online platforms which have sort of sucked audiences away and made it very very difficult mm -hmm. um, you know the net result of that is there's less public content being consumed and enjoyed by audiences there are more repeats um, and less opportunity to for children to see their lives reflected on television which is a real shame it's very important as a nation that we see ourselves reflected and for young people to see their lives reflected and you know understand the importance of of British culture so we're looking really with this fund to provide new high quality content for under 18s um, and where they can view in a protected safe environment so that's the main intention of the fund 
um, and basically give the audience the content they deserve. Mm -hmm. Lovely, brilliant. And how's it actually going to work for the people that are sat in this room here? Well, there are two streams essentially. There is a target of 5% of the budget approximately will be spent on development. Um, and so, as I say, we've got a particular focus on encouraging new voices and reflecting uh, all lives. So we want to get new storytellers, new voices, authentic represent representation on television starts from authentic storytellers. So we're really looking at encouraging that. We'll be utilising the BFI networks um, in the regions, the talent execs, execs across the country and working with them to uh, look at regional talent. We'll also be relying on the production community. We all know young people just starting in the industry are full of ideas. Let's help them. We can utilise the funding to do this. So again, it's part of a bigger collaborative process. Um, so that's the development stream and that's going to, you know, hopefully bring through lots of new talent and help people get shows to, you know, to commission ready status. So uh, that's that. And then the bigger pot of money is for production. Again, there's a target of 5% for that to support programming for Indigenous languages. So Bill, Sean Ed, our colleagues there, we're going to be able to create some great new content for uh, Indigenous language speaking children, which is fantastic. And then the rest of the production funding, you know, is just to create big, bold new ideas for our audiences and content they deserve. Amazing. Um, so tell us a bit about the team who are going to be working on that with you. Well. Before I get into the Young Audiences Content Fund team, I'd like to say thank you to the team that actually delivered uh, the pilot fund, um, from the DCMS to the BFI, so to Ben and Leanne's business operations team, an amazing feat of engineering, quite a short time, so, so big respect, big respect <laughs> to you all. And then to the Young Audiences Content Fund team, they're all, it, we're all new, it's a fresh start for all of us, <laughs> which is a lovely thing. But the people that we've got on the team, they're young, fresh, very optimistic and ambitious for the fun to do a brilliant thing for our audiences. They're all culturally switched on and passionate about the audience. There's a lovely picture of them somewhere, and we've got some oh, of them here, so I'm going to persecute them shortly. <laughs> so, oh. John Knowles is here. Wave, John, wave. <laughs> <laughs> John's going to be looking after uh, production submissions and uh, will be evaluating projects and steering shows um, through pr the process with a very light touch. You know, it's not our intention to add another editorial layer onto productions. We want to hear different broadcasters' voices shine through. We're there with a helpful hand along the way. That's how I see it, anyway. <laughs> and then Jill Biddle is not here. She's our project manager. She's the one that will be obeyed. Uh, Harriet is here. Harriet's our development executive, so you'll be submitting projects to her for consideration. Chandan Shirka is here. She's our coordinator. Uh, Hisha, my business affairs executive, will be joining us shortly. And Aisha Jan starts on Monday. And the team will be ensconced in our new home in Manchester and Leeds as of next week. So it's exciting times for us. We've just freshly come together over the last few weeks so it's uh, a great team and I'm so excited and looking forward to working with you all. They're all nice people as well I was just saying that to you wasn't I just before yes. I was like they're all nice ones well, so no scary people there that's, that's what's so good about it yeah you can, they're all approachable they're all nice no yeah. idiots no idiots yeah. there. Uh, so you've probably already um, answered this a little bit but why is this so important? I think because children's television is so vitally important um, you know Children's TV creates memories that last a lifetime. I know certainly they have for me. You know, some of my earliest memories are sitting watching The Clangers, actually. That's my that's one of my earliest memories, not just televisual memories, my earliest memories, sitting on my mum's lap watching The Clangers. And that feeling of warmth, those knitted overlords still give me, quite frankly. <laughs> um, but, um, but, you know, they last a lifetime and they can be inspirational. You know, you think of, uh, I don't know if, if you know Maggie Darren Pocock, she describes herself as a rocket scientist, but she is. She's a space scientist, astrophysicist, if you will. And she also was inspired by the Clangers because they made her look at the stars and imagine what was out there, and that inspired her, you know, love of science and the, and the universe. So it's important. They can inform and entertain and they excite and they nourish and they inspire children, and that's such an important thing to do in these days. Um, and, you know, they reflect the UK. Proper public service content reflects the lives of UK children, and that is so important. 
especially in these days, to tell, to hear each other's stories, to understand each other, because the country is in such a funny place at the moment. Seeing each other from all around the country, understanding each other, it's so important to kind of try and heal the sort of strange divisions that have started to arise. So seeing each other, understanding each other, recognising yourself on screen is such an important thing for children. And you, there's no denying the cultural significance of children's programmes. We all of us, you know, have collective memories of shows from across the ages. We all love them. They define us as being British. That's why they're important. There are so many reasons. And that's why this project and its success is vitally important. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely nothing more important than shaping the minds of the next generation. It, it amazes me when people don't think that's the most important thing. Uh, so we're going to open up uh, some of these questions to the broader panel here now. Uh, it'd be great to hear from each of you about your general impressions of the fun so far. So we'll start with you, Paul. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I, um, I have uh, met Jackie only recently. I know she's an industry legend to uh, some extent. Uh, and uh, we formed a, a bit of a partnership <coughs> as a broadcaster and somebody who uh, may control the purse, spring, purse strings of uh, the DCMS fund, which, we, which ITV we have embraced. Um, it's not something we particularly campaigned for. We're obviously a commercial broadcaster, and as Jackie uh, mentioned uh, in her, uh, her little bit, um, it's been uh, a tough time for all commercial broadcasters for various reasons due to um, things like um, uh, restrictions on advertising, uh, bigger players coming into the market, dominating the market, the growth of cable, the, the, the transfer of audiences to online spaces when um, ITV is still fundamentally a linear broadcaster. So it's come around at a time when um, we're taking stock of what we do in the kids' space and we've had a bit of a refresh on CITV already. Um, we are very open to engaging with the fund. We've begun to engage with the fund. We have one project which um, is uh, in with the um, uh, BFI uh, that we hope to get green light very soon on. Um, and we've got more ideas, and we've got and we've got more ideas going forward. Uh, and I would say to anyone who's got a great kids' idea that fits all the criteria, that the door to uh, me or to the team at CITV within ITV is very much open. Um, so I'm pleased to be here and uh, look forward to chatting to some of you a bit later if there's questions you need from me answered. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much, John Ed. Yes, I think the, the fund is a fantastic idea and I'm so pleased that it's been set up and with a, with a whole new team. Uh, I work at S4C and I only commission Welsh language programmes and we're a public service broadcaster. So to have um, uh, an extra fund that we can access with uh, the Indies is fantastic news for us. It's also really wonderful that we have uh, the 5% that's been ring-fenced for um, Indigenous languages, so we're already talking to our Celtic cousins about how, how we might work together. Um, I, I suppose for us the main thing is that um, my budget is 6.3 million a year, and for that I have to you know, our service is about 55 hours a week. So that, you know, that it's spread very, very thinly. So what I hope to get out of the fund is that we can think about new areas and we can think about the quality. So I would be <coughs> only looking for about one or two projects a year, which will really stand out. Lovely stuff. Um, so I'm at Channel 4, um, and we think it's a great idea, this. I mean, it obviously, we're, your ambition for the fund is quite in tune with our remit, which is to bring in new voices, um, diverse, you know, uh, participants, and, and, and reflect, really reflect the world around you. Um, we definitely do that. I, well, we, we sort of cater for our target audience of 16 to 34, so we are sort of looking at that older end of children's or young people Anyway, and uh, we do think really carefully about our broad appeal shows. We know we don't specifically commission um, for under 18 uh, or 16 to 34s, but we do. But we do uh, know that a lot of our broad shows sort of appeal to that. Everything from Secret Life of Four Year Olds through to Bake Off. We've got Junior Bake Off coming in through to a lot of our dramas, Ackley Bridge. You know, um, we we can kind of we we definitely look at the themes that we are 
challenging um, our audiences with and trying to reflect their world. There was a cautionary tale of self-harm in Hollyoaks just this week. Um, and we feel like as a broadcaster, we're sort of looking at what can uh, sort of educate a young audience in sort of in the gap between what they learn at school and what you do in parenting. Um, and from a personal point of view, I was at Children's BBC for, for four years and it really is sort of the bastion of, you know, how to educate through TV. But they, you know, in a world, uh, as you're saying, that, that there's, you know, there's education through content online everywhere, it'd be really nice to be able to sort of dig deeper into our remit and look at how we could properly commission to target those audiences that would balance between how we are commercially, uh, you know, commercially funded broadcaster that also delivers to our remit. So I think it, it could be a really collaborative relationship. So we're looking forward to working with them. Lovely. And Bill? Yeah, Jackie was talking about how important uh, children's content is and the enduring power of, um, of all those great programs we saw. And I remember as, I, as a kid growing up in the Western Isles of Scotland, uh, never hearing Gaelic on, on television uh, until a TV drama, a kids' drama came along called uh, The Hill of the Red Fox, uh, which is set in Sky. This is the early 70s. And some of the characters were speaking Gaelic. And it was electrifying. It was so, so uh, important, such a, such a moment for me that here was me, my friends, my family, my community, my language, my culture, having a place in the world. Um, and now I work in uh, Gaelic language television. I look after drama uh, and uh, comedy and kids content. We carry mostly um, versioned animations, so uh, fairly familiar titles that we dub into Gaelic. But for us, the great lack, the great absence is live action. We, we just simply uh, can't really afford to produce uh, drama or comedy for, for kids. So uh, this fantastic fund may be an opportunity for us to get that vital content onto the screens where the children can see their own language being spoken. Um, and we do hope to work with Sean and other um, uh, of our colleagues in the Celtic Nations we are very open to working in other um, uh, partnerships, possibly shooting back to back. However, we can accomplish it. Uh, we, this is really, really important for us. A really fantastic opportunity. Lovely stuff. And uh, Channel Five couldn't be here, but Alison Bakunovic, I said that right, uh, SVP and General Man Manager of Nickelodeon UK and Ireland, and Milkshake has shared her thoughts on the fund. Uh, they say we have a number of potential projects in development that we hope will qualify for the Young Audiences Content Fund, and we're excited at the prospect of creating new UK original children's programming that will add to our local commissioning strategy for Milkshake on Channel Five. Our hope is that the fund will be beneficial to broadcasters and producers alike, and we look forward to working with the. BFI in the coming months to play our part in making the fund a success. So there we go. We've got representation from lots of different people there. Um, I'm going to open these questions out just to whoever on the panel wants to answer. Um, how do you think the fund might benefit your platforms and your audience in particular? For us, I think Bill mentioned uh, live action uh, scripted is a real struggle for any broadcaster especially in the kids' space. Um, you're talking about um, uh, you know, Scottish languages, uh, Welsh language programming. But even for CRTV, you know, I will admit we've not had live action comedy or drama on the channel for a while. So that is a priority. Um, the reason we don't have it is it's the riskiest form of television in terms of um, the commercial returns on it. We don't expect usually when we commission things on CITV to return a positive ROI. We do it for other reasons and we, we end up trying to make our money up by you know filling the gaps with Scooby-Doo and things like that. <laughs> um, but that's just the economy we're working in. But um, ideas in uh, live action scripted are, are uh, absolutely encouraged. But I think we will... Um, script, um, scripted as well takes a longer time to develop. So I think the first thing that we will end up uh, doing with the fund that we'll get to announce in due course um, will um, probably be something studio based or shot in the field again match meeting all the criteria that um, the fund has set out um, but our ambition is to um, get back to a day where we can have some form of maybe serialized uh, drama on, uh, on CITV uh, or, or, at le or at least comedy. Lovely, brilliant. Yeah, same for us. Um, definitely, uh, scripted drama, scripted comedy is is an area. You know, as you say, it's it's very difficult for us to fund, and we're also looking at the 13 to 16 age group. So we're aging up for the first time now. So that that's really exciting. 
I've got a couple of projects we're developing at the moment, and they are um, they're multi-platform projects on the kind of Scandinavian uh, kind of model, where you have some short content on TV platforms, and then um, they're also elsewhere on on social media platforms and so on. So I'm interested to see what the companies come up with and how we can work with them, um, putting it into the fund. Mm, interesting. And yeah, again, just our, our unique position is just that we are the commercially funded but have this remit to deliver. We, we do have some specific commissions for children, sort of our big epic pieces we've done at Christmas time, like the Snowman and Snow Dog or the Bear Hunt, but those are obviously uh, costly. But it'd be great if there are other opportunities. We've got other, we have reality that again appeals to that, that younger audience. I know you were saying earlier that, you know, 12 to 15, was it 40 percent of 12 to 15 year olds don't feel like they're reflected back at them. So we have big reality plays, the circle, you know, um, those sort of things. And um, I think that's just just a world in which we could, you know, we want to make bold bold television that speaks to a younger audience. And I just think um, with the help of, with, of, of this fund, we might be able to take sort of bigger risks on things that might not have other been, otherwise been commercially viable. Right. Yeah, I, I think that uh, Sean was talking about multi-platform uh, content. From BBC Alba's point of view, I don't think we're quite there yet. Uh, I think we're going to concentrate on the slightly younger kids up to about 12. Um, I, you know, I talked about uh, live action. I think that uh, the other genres that would be really interesting for us would be factual and factual entertainment as well, especially if we can get a format that can work across uh, different uh, broadcasters, actually. Lovely. And do any of you have any plans already that you want to or can share with the group? Uh, no, just to say that we're positively engaged with it, and um, it's too soon to announce projects uh, before they've been greenlit. That's just the precedent for all of us, I'm sure, with any project, whether it's funded um, with um, money from the DCMS or otherwise. Um, we, in children's television, it's typical that we would find uh, funding models in which the broadcaster doesn't automatically uh, fund 100%, uh, and in those cases also, we would never put the kind of the cart before the horse and announce it too soon. But but there will be announcements. I mean, there's no doubt that there will be announcements, and that this fund will produce some great content that otherwise wouldn't have been made if it weren't for the DCMS and the BFI and all the good work that the people in this room are doing to um, ensure that. That's your quote there for just yeah. to show everyone it's been a success. That was <laughs> loved it. that was kind of just perfect. The, the perfect quote to advertise it. Yeah. Uh, anyone else want to share anything about any plans they've got in the pipeline? <laughs> Everyone's keeping their cards very close to their chest. I did wonder. I jumped straight to that question because I wanted to get straight to the juicy stuff. But I did think that perhaps nobody would want to share. Um, what would a positive outcome from the fund look like for everybody on this panel? Do you think? Well, for us, it would be that we are delivering uh, content that resonates with our audience, which on CITV is six to 12 year olds, um, in uh, a meaningful way and content that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to put in front of them. I think it will shift the balance. We're very aware on CITV that the balance between global content, animated content, and locally commissioned live action content is not where we would like it to be. This fund will, I hope allow us to address that balance and I think just um, there will be a shift in terms of the offer on CITV which will move us closer, nowhere near to the extent that CBC who are doing a brilliant job um, uh, with uh, their offer for kids and on CBBS too but we will move closer to them and further away I think from the kind of global players like the Disney's and the Nickelodeon's and the yeah. Cartoon Networks and that, that would be our ambition to, to root ourselves more at home, more British and to talk more directly to UK kids. Great. Well, for us, I suppose it would be um, a, a completely standout, brand new, completely innovative 13 to 16, uh, a project for 13 to 16 year olds that, that we've never done before or seen in Welsh or possibly even in, in, in the UK. So that's a real um, ambition. And secondly, I suppose it would be drama, uh, well funded, either drama or comedy for these 6 to 12 year olds. <coughs> Uh, and hopefully then they would stand out. I mean, we have, you know, you've mentioned um, SVOD platforms and so on. I mean, there's a huge number of fantastic projects out there, you know, to, to just pinch above your weight with the, with the kind of budgets that we have is really difficult. And as, as Bill said, it's even difficult for, you know, for some broadcasters even to, to fund live action at all. So um, I think really with these two projects uh, in the next uh, year and a half, maybe two years, would just really to to really stand out and that would then hopefully create IP for the indie companies so they can then um, sell. 
Yeah, I think it's important to point out that this will allow you guys, producers in the room, to benefit on back end that the broadcaster doesn't. You know, we we want to we want to get you doing good business that you can monetize elsewhere, sell internationally, and all of that. Our, you know, our part of the bargain is we get subsidy, and we take a license. And once that license is done, hopefully we'll be renewing these series, by the way, and we'll, they'll be on air for a while. But um, I think the, 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 there's other benefits for you guys in terms of what you can make once you've got that IP that is still yours, by the way. It's not, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no um, thought that the BFI would want to share in any back end, as far as I understand it. Please jump in <laughs> if I'm speaking out of turn. <laughs> Great. Um, I thought I think it's about scale and ambition, you know, in a, a sort of a in a world of so, so much out there for young people to consume, you know, on, on YouTube to everything, and I just think it, you we, we've got to try and find brands that cut through. We'll always have our Channel Four tone to that, a subversive tone that we again know challenges perceptions or or makes people think in a different way or gives gives authorship to a brand new voice, you know. But I think you know with a collaboration like this. Like like with any kind of collaboration, with any other kind of co-pro, you just, you, you know, it will allow bigger scale and ambition to an idea because you, ultimately, the, 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 you know, it's a combined force. It, it's, more, it's, more, it's more money to spend on whether that's a brilliant bit of global talent, whether that's, you know, just a, an idea supersized. I just think, I think it will, will allow to make some stronger brands that can cut through. Yeah, it's very simple for us. It's, it's Gaelic speaking children on screen in you know, really exceptional uh, content, great, telling great stories. It's, it's that simple, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I, I don't mean it to sound parochial at all, though it's really important as well that it's uh, in a broad context, you know, that the, that the stories we're telling uh, are uh, open uh, to the world. Um, so we're uh, talking to our colleagues at the European Broadcasting Union about various projects, and that's really exciting for us. So at the moment, we do carry... Um, a uh, short uh, children's drama from across Europe and even wider afield, which we version, uh, although we contribute uh, Gaelic language, uh, a Gaelic language film to that club scheme. But that's fantastic for our audience as well to see children living, speaking, having fun, getting into adventures, but in, in different contexts. Uh, CRTV, we, uh, we target, as I said, up to 12 years old. Um, we on ITV we uh, somebody mentioned I think uh, you mentioned on Channel Four some of the television that's not directly aimed at kids but but uh, that children watch on uh, ITV main channel so I mean we do the kid the kids version of Voice Kids I don't know if you've seen it it's brilliant it's better than the grown up one just saying. <laughs> um, but you know things like the X Factor and I'm subject to get them out of here so we we do engage kids and it's important that ITV engages family audiences as well as children um, the. The area that we don't specifically target is this kind of um, younger adult, this kind of um, 13 to 16 age group. There are conversations that we are just having internally that have begun because it is a neglected audience to some extent, and um, it would it would it, it would need a little bit of thought on our part as broadcasters to make sure that we find the right precinct in which we can land that type of content. You know, where would it be? Would it be too young for ITV2? Is there a space on the main channel? Is there a is there a day part, say weekend afternoons, where otherwise ITV might not be that competitive? Um, so it's a thought that's going around. Uh, some of us that, that care about children's um, television at the moment. We've not got, we can't say we've got a project in development that would hit that, but I think um, forums like this are really interesting because it throws up um, co uh, conversations that, um, that can possibly start the ball rolling into areas that we hadn't really um, thought about and that could potentially fill some gaps and some need um, still in that linear space. Yeah, and again, again, obviously our remit is 16 to 34, but we do we do uh, make a lot of shows that appeal to that. And I think in particular with um, talent, you know, we just, uh, Joe Lysett's Got Your Back, which is a comedy consumer show, which is, um, which uh, our department just made. It's the second show tonight. That was, you know, up 28% on slot for young people. You know, I think the use of putting someone like Noel Fielding in the Bake Off, that has brought in younger audiences. So it's aspirational content that can appeal to that younger audience, but we're not specifically making a kids show. So um, I think it, it is about, uh, you know, it, I think use of talent is really there. I think tonally, I, 
um, head of features and formats, and we're trying to look at how we can um, sort of do entertaining versions of traditional feature stuff that, again, will appear to appeal to a younger audience. Um, sort of those bright, poppy colours that, that do cut through to kids, or or something that makes you think or reflects their life back at them. So I think it's you know that we deliver a lot to 8 p.m., which is when a lot of young people are are watching so I think it's just it will always again always have our tone it, it, it's more subversive it's not it's not educational in the way that children's BBC is but we hope it's sort of competitive to to other content providers out there uh, yeah Paul talks about um, uh, formats and titles that um, can attract that those slightly older kids but that are appealing to a, to a more broad audience as well and that's really what we're trying to do. We, um, uh, we can't really afford to fragment our audience too much. Uh, so in terms of those older kids, uh, we've, got a we've got a format like uh, Funk, which is a sketch show, broken comedy show. It's uh, made up of short, snappy sketches, very subversive. Uh, and we publish that um, online, uh, sorry, on, on our linear channel as a half hour uh, program but we also break it up into individual sketches on um, Facebook and uh, YouTube as well. So that's how we're going to continue to try to appeal to the slightly older kids. Jackie, from a BFI perspective, I know the fund is for 0 to 18s, but do you have certain quotas or are there certain age groups within that you want to, that you need to hit or is it just no, whatever I mean, the ideas are and who, who they're for? Ofcom described where the deficits were and there's not enough programming that reflects children's lives in the UK, that's, that's a given. And I think, you know, we're going to be led by the broadcaster commissions, you know, for the bigger part of the fund. Um, so, you know, we're not going to identify we need four live action fact tent shows for, you know, we're not going to do that. We're going to be led by the broadcasters and actually by the best content mm -hmm. that gets submitted because it is a competitive fund at the end of the day. So the more sort of submissions we get, the better and the best shows because it's going to be those big, powerful new shows, big, bold ideas that cut through that really kind of make the fund work and resonate with the audience. Oh, Sh shall I? Yes. Well, on scripted <laughs> content, um, it's great if you've written a first draft script. Um, we're very up for looking at them, <laughs> reading them. Um, you don't need to have got to, to script stage. Uh, we can just... Um, we can just look at a storyline and, and a concept. Uh, if it's original, if it's based on a book, there's a conversation to be, um, to, ha to be had at the development stage around adaptation. I think the great thing about the fund is that the fund will commit more to development than it will do in terms of percentage of uh, contribution to production. So it, it, it's likely that you can go to the BFI and get development funding to get your project to a point where you feel like it's fit to then present to the broadcaster. And as um, these guys, I'm sure, will attest that the better developed something is when it comes in, the easier it is for us to understand exactly what it is will be delivered. And so the conversation starts at a kind of um, a stage, a second stage, if you like, which is uh, always helpful. And I just say that about the fund, actually, the development fund, we put no sort of <coughs> restrictions or sort of barriers around it. It's flexible. You can apply to the fund and ask us for an amount of money and just justify what you're asking for because we want to attract sort of very new entrants in who need support from sort of very sort of early doors development to more experienced professionals who might be looking for that support just to do a piece, piece of proof of concept to get it into a commissionable state. So, you know, you can apply for anything. There's no restriction on the amount of money you can apply for, but as long as it's sort of commensurate with your total budget, that might be an idea. Um, but uh, um, so, you know, we are very flexible in that regard. So, you know, ask us for what you think you need and why you need it. We, sorry, no. no. <laughs> Shall I go? Go on. No, I was just. Uh, we're not agnostic when it comes to uh, forms of television for children, and uh, we're talking about live action. And I've mentioned live action as as a priority. I mean that only because it, it's largely the most um, expensive and riskiest form of. Um, television for kids. We have um, we have got in post production at the moment a new animated series which is going to be my favourite thing on CITV. I have to tell you, it's called the Rubbish World of Dave Spud. It's a 26 part animated series about a little boy who lives in Manchester. He's 10 years old. He lives in a, a tenement block. He's got a blended family. His mum got remarried. He's he's a lonely kid. Um, and he's got the worst kind of situation, the worst working class life that you could possibly have. 
but what he has is a brilliant imagination and that's where the animation kicks in and animation does what live action can't which it can take you into crazy super lovely worlds where um, children can get lost in terms of their viewing experience of it so we're committed to animation and um, we are committed also if there is the right project to working with the BFI to make sure we can get all the appropriate funding to do great animation on CITV over and above what we're already doing say what I was going to say now. Sorry, <laughs> Okay, as you know, the fund is open for live action and animation as well, and you know that I think that animation is such a brilliant medium for sometimes telling difficult stories. And I think, you know, the Ofcom report did sort of uh, describe that there's a lot of preschool animation particularly available in the UK, which there is, but I would say that there's a lot of international imported animation for preschoolers available in the UK and there's not a huge amount of pre uniquely feeling British animation for preschoolers in the UK. I mean I don't identify things like Sarah and Duck. <coughs> hey Dougie is feeling uniquely British and describing sort of our sense of humour, the quirkiness of it. So you know animation is not excluded and it's about the best projects that come forward Kate. Oh, can, sorry can I make a point as yeah, well? Yeah yeah I was going to say um, something else on the panel ever. I've just remembered something. Um, because animation is going to be really important for um, working together with other languages and so on. Um, but please, can somebody come up with an idea for a, um, a, an animation for seven to tens that has a feisty female lead? Because I am completely fed up of unicorns, mermaids. I love unicorns. <laughs> Anything in pink. You know, girls, girls never have as much fun. They're never as funny. They're never as adventurous. You know, we, we really need this kind of content um, with a girl, feisty girl lead. So in terms of regional production companies, we want to work with production companies from all around the country. Um, we'll be utilising, I say, the BFI network of hubs and talent execs to reach out to new creators, new small production companies. We've not necessarily been able to get a foot in the broadcast door before. I think that's a really important part to the fund's work. Um, so we will be travelling around the country, we will be embarking on a road show, I say we in the very royalist sense, you, <laughs> maybe me, um, and actually going round and spreading the word about the fund and obviously I want all of you production community to do the same and reach out to new talent around the country, that's really important, so from all around the country, very important to us. Um, and in terms of the platforms, um, you know, they need to be Ofcom regulated, they need to be free to air public service platforms uh, with a significant UK wide reach. That's where we're starting out with the fund. Um, you know, as I say, the fund is a pilot, we're flexible, and we'll see sort of what sort of traction we're getting with that from the starting point. But we can review all the way through the fund. So you just look at the news and the stories that come through, and children need to understand and have the context of what's going on in those countries. So, yes, programmes like that. It's, it's important in understanding, uh, you know, and getting a knowledge of the wider world as well as Britain. But, you know, reflecting UK children's lives is important, but understanding the wider world is also important. Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we from, at BBC Alba, we take, we take part in a couple of uh, European Broadcasting Union schemes. So we're part of their children's documentary scheme and their short drama scheme as well. So our audience will see films from right across Europe, in fact, wider, further afield from Japan, Korea, China, and so on. And that's really important for us. And uh, hopefully this fund will, will help float some of the Scottish ideas in that overall mix. Well, as I said, we're going to be utilising the pre-existing BFI networks rather than sort of start up any more um, uh, local bespoke hubs. But I think, you know, as a production community, you know, speaking as a former independent producer, we all have young people working with or alongside our companies that are full of great ideas. And I think, you know, if you can mentor those young people sort of as a community, that's a brilliant thing. But in terms of establishing anything more formal, if that's what you mean, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, we, we're going to be utilising pre-existing networks as a first start. If you, you go onto the website, and actually this is something for everybody, um, you can sign up to um, information that the, the Young Audiences Content Fund will be putting out. I, I would say it should be everybody's intention to reflect the world around them and the society we live in. And if you're making a programme about a certain sort of section subject, you should do it with authenticity, um, absolutely. And, you know, I've 
looked on shows that absolutely do that. I am seeing Ronnie McGuinness sitting there who made the beautiful Pablo for CBeebies. I'm a massive advocate for inclusivity and diversity and we will be absolutely operat operating on that sort of basis with the fund. Do you have a show that is oven ready um, and ready to go to a broadcaster? Then you know, you've got to do the usual thing and go submit that project. If you've got something in early doors development, send in an application to the fund. I know you've read the guidelines, good girl. Um, everyone read the guidelines, very important. Um, <laughs> helpful. Um, so, you know, you can, you can apply for development funding for individual projects. Um, and, you know, as I say, there's no sort of ceiling to that. And, you know, as long as you sort of show your workings, as it were, and say, I want X amount of money to achieve X, Y, and Z in this development process, that money is available and sort of, you know, so put your submissions in. And we want as many people as possible to engage with the fund on that basis. So when you submit your project, um, we'll do a very quick eligibility check to see whether your project is meeting our sort of top line el eligibility criteria. I can't say that, and I should have to drink water. <laughs> um, but then if it sort of is a yes, it'll go forward into our evaluation process. At the moment, we are saying 12 weeks before you get a yes or no, but that is because we are box fresh and we don't have an office yet. We will on Monday. <laughs> our expectation is that that timeline will reduce over time because our intention is to turn things around as quickly as possible because, you know, let's be realistic, the pilot has a very short lifespan in TV production terms, so we want to get things sort of of development in process as quickly as we can. We want to help things get into production and onto screen as quickly as possible because at the end of the day, the results of those, those activities are going to be the thing that the fund is judged on. So we want to see results as soon as we possibly can. So we're going to be very, very quick, aren't we team? <laughs>